I worked in the biggest room because there were over 100 girls worked in that. And that's how you was taught every day. We never got time to talk. You were too busy to work. Because you wanted to do it good because you knew that you wouldn't pass. See, they'd, they'd let you do it about six weeks. And if you wasn't any good, you were dismissed. And the bosses worked downstairs a lot of time. So we just figured, well, we got a little radium left in our jars. So we won't, they're going to be well cleaned out. We got to get new for starting after lunch. So we take a sneak. So we start clowning around, go in the dark room. Paint our faces up and put mustaches and a couple of girls painted their ears and I just said I always did paint you know by my nostrils hair and done my eyebrows and done a must mustache and a chin. And one time, we had one girl that even painted her teeth and, leave, and held her mouth open till it dried on there. See, it dried. And then the three of us, we went in the dark room to make faces at each other, see. And then you can. You don't see nothing, nobody. All you see is the radium. So all you're looking at is eyebrows and mustaches and your teeth. How much did you have each week? Well, when I first started, I was getting seventeen fifty a week. And when I left the dime store, I was only making $5. So it was a lot of money. And was it Don't you work? think it was? Yes. That's what I like more about than the work. <laughs> the money. Because <laughs> I could buy what I want. And I always thought, God, I was blessed with this anyway. So keep at it. But at that time, I enjoyed my and my life. I always had a lot of good friends. We all got along good together. I enjoyed going out with them. We'd go over town and eat. Once in a while, buy what we wanted. Go to the park. I would say Margaret was my closest friend. <laughs> and uh, she went with my, when I put going with the boyfriend, it was, they were cousins. We both went, she went with one and I went with the other one. And she was my best friend. And she was a good worker, too. And then before I knew it, she got sick and she had the broken jawbone. It never healed. In two years, she was dead. Peg's trouble started when she had a tooth pulled. And it wouldn't heal. The It was all honeycombed from the radium. The tooth never did heal. This is my sister. How she looked at 17, before she went to work at the radium dial. And she looked the picture of health. She's such a pretty girl. Red pretty hair. hair. This is a picture of her, how she looked just a couple weeks before she passed away with her boyfriend, Chuck, with some of the smaller children. When she'd come home after work, she would lay, have to lay down and rest. I can see her walking down the street. She limped. And it all seemed to settle in her hip. Of course, it was all through her bones. This is Peg and Chuck. They would have been married the following June. But she passed away in August, before the month of June. She was a wonderful fella. Chuck, right up until the very end. Chuck fell awful bad mm -hmm. about it. And Chuck used to put Peg in the, the little wagon when she got so bad and pulled her up to where we used to have the picnic. She couldn't walk, so he just pulled, put her in the wagon away we went. 
And when, it was, oh, it must have been about a year that she was so really, you know, bad. My parents took her to a doctor in Chicago. He confirmed what they had thought it was. But he says, I cannot speak out and tell you because this would be the end of my career. So there was really nothing they could do. He went to a lawyer, but evidently the lawyer was bought, bought off. Couldn't do nothing for us, so Daddy said, well, just forget it. He said, we won't go any further. And like she was put over in, in the company's doctors, his hospital, and we had no say whatsoever about that. They wouldn't let us there. They wouldn't let me yes, there. Yes, I went one mm -hmm. time, and they wouldn't leave me go into her room. I had to stay in the hall and visit from the hall. And uh, she was there for about two weeks and passed away. And when she passed away, it was about 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, and they wanted to take her body out and put it right into something where we don't know. They wanted to bury it right now. And my brother-in-law happened to be there, and he says, no way is she going to be buried that way. She's a good Catholic girl, and she's going to have a, a mass and a whole funeral. They had this autopsy set for a certain time. When our doctor went, the autopsy had been performed an hour before he got there. And they said diphtheria. So... What does this tell you? Mm -hmm. 